Uh, reactions live of, uh, as we speak from the U.S. Secretary of State, the U.S. Ex expressing its deep concern uh, over uh, the, this detention, uh, condemning, uh, quote, Antony Blinken, saying that the U.S. condemns the Kremlin's continued attempts to intimidate, repress, and punish journalists. Well, for more, uh, let's turn to a former uh, Moscow bureau chief for the Wall Street uh, Journal. Craig Kapitas, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Francois. Uh, what, what more do we know at this point? Have you been in touch with your colleagues and former colleagues? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And uh, we're doing everything we, we possibly can. Uh, uh, the foreign correspondent community, uh, current and former from the Wall Street Journal, is a very tight-knit community. And we appreciate everyone's help here. And at this point in time, the most disgusting thing is how Russian bots and social media are trying to paint Evan as a spy. Wall Street Journal reporters are not spies. Wall Street Journal reporters do not work for the United States government or any other government. The nonsense that's being spewed out by Putin's propagandists right now is absolutely disgusting and untenable. He was reporting on the Wagner mercenary group. Evan was reporting on a lot of things. Wall Street Journal reporters are trained to go into any story and look for various angles. Maybe come out with a story on Wagner, maybe come out on a story on production, economic production in that area. Uh, it's, it's not like, I, I don't know what his particular assignment was there, but having been in his shoes, I can tell you he was working on more than one story. That's just the way it works on the foreign desk of the Wall Street Journal. Uh, the uh, Daily Beast uh, contacted uh, the Wagner Daily Beast, for which you're uh, contributing yes. uh, uh, editor, uh, and, uh, the contacted the, uh, its founder, Yevgeny Prigozhin, says he was unaware of the story, uh, and then quipped, if you want, I can check the torture cellar in my house to see if he's there. I didn't see him among the American journalists I keep there by the dozens. Uh, but it, uh, and also look at the fresh graves of foreign journalists on my house plot. Um, uh, so uh, a bit of dark humor from uh, from Yevgeny. I Prigozhin. see nothing humorous about that at all, Francois. That points to the absolute pathological ghoulishness of Vladimir Putin and the Cretans who work for him, and and it, it's a reflection of what Putin has been doing in Ukraine for the past year. There is nothing funny about that whatsoever. It is ghoulish, it is unacceptable, and, and it tells you everything you need to know about Vladimir Putin and the people who work for him. There was the recent uh, release of Brittany Griner, yes. the U.S. basketball player, in exchange for uh, Victor Boot, uh, the uh, arms merchant who had been jailed in the U.S. Uh, the Moscow was contacted today. Uh, officials, they're saying it's too early to talk about a swap. Uh, but I I is there, can we expect down the line, by pa judging by the past, that it's uh, part I of some bargain? I believe in this instance we can, Francois. According to the people my colleagues at the Daily Beast have spoken with, people I've spoken with in Moscow, people colleagues at the Wall Street Journal have spoken with, I think it it is with, with some safety that we can... Uh, I don't like to use the word assume, but I am, to assume that what Putin is doing here is building up his Western flesh uh, in a corral who he can trade for Russian spies and others who are currently detained in the West. Th uh, this is what Putin does. There are more, as I understand it, there are more Russians jailed in the West than there are Westerners in, in Russia right now. So this will give Putin a, a, a freer hand. However, he does not have to do this uh, uh, immediately. It'll probably be one and a half to two months because they're want to going to go through the process and carry out this this shameful propaganda campaign against Evan and, and, and the paper. Um, and all we can keep doing is is beating the drum. How much room for maneuver does Joe Biden, the U.S. president, have? When Brittany Griner was released, uh, there was criticism from the opposition. Why didn't they get Paul Whelan, that former Marine who's being held for spying out? Uh, what, what, what are his options here? He doesn't have many here, Francois. Uh, he is between the proverbial rock and a hard place right now. Um, look, the, the Marine, uh, Griner... All of them who have been detained there illegally on trumped-up charges 
uh, deserve equal treatment, equal zest, one might say, than trying to get them out. Uh, it's always in a case like this that when it's one of your colleagues, particularly at your old newspaper, um, that your dander gets up. We want Evan out right now. Uh, uh, certainly, my, my private discussions today with people at the Journal, uh, everyone's handling this very, very cautiously, obviously. We have to. But I think in the back of their, our minds, we, we know what Putin is up to here. And at this point, I, I, think what, I think what we can say is, Evan, you're not alone right now. There's a lot, including you, and we thank you. I mean, thank you, France 24. This is a very important issue. You have correspondence on the ground there, Francois. France 24 has correspondence on the ground. Shortly after the war broke out, most news organizations pulled out their Western correspondents who had dual nationality, be it Russian, French, Russian, American. In this case, he was born in Moscow, Evan Gershkovich, but he's not a Russian citizen. He is not a Russian citizen. He is an American citizen. He is a staff correspondent of the Wall Street Journal. If he was a Russian citizen, it would be harder for him. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. And we don't know if the Russians might say, well, since you were born here, you were a Russian. We do not know what nonsense uh, uh, Putin and his thugs are going to do here with Evan. But I, I, again, apologies for repeating myself. Wall Street Journal reporters are... Do not work for foreign governments. Never have, never will. Let's just talk one second about the broader context. We're in this period where the fighting is still going on, uh, but has a little bit, a tiny bit lessened uh, the, uh, in the uh, east of Ukraine. Uh, we're expecting some kind of a big offensive from both sides right. come the spring. What do you make of the timing of this arrest? is Putin once again making mischief. This is what he does. He likes to throw monkey wrenches into things. He likes to confuse. He likes chaos. Uh, he likes to play the ghoul. He likes to be unexpected. Um, this, is not, this is not surprising. Uh, uh, as for what's going on in eastern Ukraine, well, we'll see how that plays out militarily. The, 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 the thing right now is that for me, at least, and a lot of our colleagues, and I think you would share this as well, is that given the situation that Evan is in, given the situation that's been going on in Russia for the past year, the fact that Evan and the other co young correspondents, Moscow correspondents, are still there is heroic, that they're, uh, uh, they're, they're still reporting. And... Vladimir Putin increasingly is making this about Russia versus the United States, about the eternal war, about superpowers. How does that compare from when you were stationed there? Complete, completely different. When 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 I was there, this is when Nick Daniloff was was arrested and swapped a few months later. Former correspondent, 1986 U.S. News and World Report. Gorbachev had recently recently ta uh, taken over, uh, but. Um, there was no one other other than Nick during my years who experienced this, you know, this this kind of thing. Uh, this this is a, 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 a horrific tactics, you know, by Putin. What he does is that he takes advantage of the West. This is another example of it. There are Russian correspondents in the United States right now who can report freely. There are Russian correspondents here in France. Now, we know that Biden and Macron are not going to go out and arrest these people and put them in jail on trumped-up espionage charges, because that's not what we do. But this is what Putin does, and this is what limits Biden's response. We don't want to see any journalists jailed, none. So what is Biden going to do? Who is Putin going to arrest next? Is it going to be another visiting tourist? Is it going to be another uh, soccer player? Is it going to be another journalist? We don't know. Craig Kapitas, former uh, Wall Street Bureau chief uh, in Moscow. Many thanks for being with us. Thank you.